Alrighty, welcome back to the van build. I am Confluence, your arbiter of van-based buffoonery. And today we're talking about something that really hung over my head a lot during the earlier stages of the build. Once I'd bought my charger for all my batteries and figured out the main bits of the electrics, I was still something that I hadn't figured out. And that was this mysterious D plus connection. So maybe you might be in a similar boat where you have a battery to battery charger of some kind that requires a D plus connection, but you can't find out how to get one from your van. Here's how I figured it out. Now, obviously first I scoured the internet for a long time looking for information about this. And I, most of the stuff I found was very not noob friendly. It seemed like there wasn't really an answer to this that was very satisfactory. I found reasonably early on, with the thanks to the mechanic that came and fixed my brakes earlier in the lockdown period, that, that there was a video of someone showing you how to get this connection, <laughs> but <laughs> it was not a pretty solution. In fact, it was a massive hack. Quite literally, in fact. It involved taking off the front of your dashboard, getting to the wires behind it, and splicing into one of the cables. Now, for quite obvious reasons, I didn't want to do this. <clears throat> but even more than that, I didn't really want anyone else to do this. Like, even someone qualified, it still looked ugly as hell, and just felt like a really dodgy way of solving this problem. I really didn't like it. The only other clue that I had really found was a video that was very dark and quite meandering by about about my exact charger saying that he installed it with a switch but he wasn't really going into detail about what that meant i mean a switch sounded great obviously there's a downside that you can forget to turn it off and end up draining your starter battery and not being able to move but you also have more control if for some reason you don't want to take power from the battery you don't have to so if you had a flat battery and you really didn't want your leisure battery charging from your starter battery for a bit while you let it charge back up again, you would just leave it turned off. And to me, that's pretty beneficial. And there was actually another reason why that came in handy, but I'll save that till later. But first off, like, what is a D-plus connection? It's essentially a connection that tells the person on the other end of the connection, or the person being a, an electrical device, a charger, that the engine is running so that it's clear to start taking power from the starter battery. This is required because in more modern engines, like Euro 5 onwards, I believe, the alternators are what's called smart alternators. So they don't constantly charge the battery. They will charge the battery when they feel like they need to, I guess, like when the, when the voltage is, is low enough to be below a threshold to kick in. And they'll also just top up the battery whenever they have sort of excess power, i.e. like when your engine braking, just slowing down in gear, you essentially have more power than you're using. You're using the momentum of the vehicle to power the engine. You're not usually using any fuel. So it makes sense to kick the alternator on and get a little bit more benefit out of that because you're probably just stopping anyway and just gonna waste it in heat in your brakes. So you can't simply use a traditional VSR voltage sensitive voltage sensitive relay. I think that's what a VSR is, which essentially just turns on the charging once the voltage of the starter battery goes above a certain amount, because that traditionally would tell you that the engine was running because the, the battery is being charged, so the voltage jumps up. That's not going to work properly in a modern engine. So you need this D plus signal basically, and it's just a 500 milliamp current just happens when the engine is running. Now the trouble is, it seems like my van just doesn't have this connection. I did find some information on an obscure uh, sort of builder's manual, like for people who convert Fiat Ducatos. I found some references to this extra block, which does have this connection that you can just wire into. However, that's not standard. You need to buy a vehicle that has that fitted or you're not going to have it. Maybe there's a possibility of getting that fitted aftermarket by like a Fiat retailer, a Fiat shop of some kind, but 
I imagine that's pretty expensive and I was pretty determined to find a workaround and having found this video that explained that you could do this with a switch that sounded like a really neat solution to me but nowhere could I find information on exactly how you would wire that up what's the power source for this if I just wire my battery directly into this cable and send it into my charger is that going to work what determines that 500 milliamp draw these were questions that I needed to answer and I basically dived into more lower level electronic stuff trying to find out what determines the draw now the word draw is kind of a clue it, it, it implies that it's the thing that wants the power that pulls the amount that it wants obviously this is a simplification of the actual physics but that's not really what we need to go into right now we just need to know how things work in practice and so i looked at you know what is my charger it was effectively like a complicated microcontroller and i found out that microcontrollers depend on a lot of internal resistances and it's those internal resistances that that essentially control the current that gets drawn so everything was kind of pointing to the fact that yeah all i need to do is plug it into a power source i.e the starter battery and then just wire that into the d plus input on my charger i was still a little bit concerned but it felt right because you know if you're just splicing into a cable in the dash that's essentially what you're doing anyway you're just doing it with extra steps because the source of the power for those dashboard wires is just the starter battery there's nowhere else that it comes from there isn't any magic it's just exactly the same really as the 12 volt wiring at the back for the leisure battery you have a cable running from your positive of your of your leisure batteries to a fuse box and then you plug everything in so it's basically just like tapping in at that point but you could just wire it straight to the positive of the starter battery but i figured out a way to test this essentially the fuse that i was supposed to use on this d plus connection was five amps which implies that the charger itself can handle a bigger draw than the 500 milliamps that it expects before it malfunctions otherwise it wouldn't be a five amp fuse it would be a smaller fuse so i thought hey well i can test this with a one amp fuse and if it does just dump a load of current and is about to really mess it up that will blow faster than a five amp fuse but it should still work if it works you know if it does just deliver the 500 milliamps that we want and tell the charger what to do then great that's still going to work with a one amp fuse so i had to wire everything up i don't have a great amount of footage of all of this um, but that essentially involved drilling another hole for the cable for the d plus connection because i hadn't drilled that yet i'd only drilled them for the the positive and negatives that were coming from the starter battery and yeah just treated that as before filed it down put a little rubber grommet hit grommet in the hole and sort of taped everything up to try and keep it from moving the grommet didn't fit that well because i kind of made the hole a bit too big again i think but it's quite tricky to like get it in there and yeah i don't know so i tried to tape everything in place so it wouldn't move just in case it sort of knocked the grommet off and then would start wearing the cable down i don't know how well that turned out we'll see if it breaks in x amount of time and yeah the rest of it was just a case of crimping the connections on and sort of running the cables into the right place i've got a bit of video of me doing that but it's not very exciting <clears throat> the exciting bit essentially came when i had everything wired up and i was ready to give it a test so you know turn the engine on everything seems fine you know checked checked the old voltage here and there i think along the way that didn't really tell me very much though <laughs> but you know it feels cleverer like ooh, i can use my fancy tool with the little spiky things to show me numbers on a screen <laughs> <laughs> but yeah everything started running i flipped the switch i walked over to the charger and lo and behold it was charging the light had come on the correct light had illuminated to say that it was being powered from the starter battery everything was working yes yes this was a huge moment of success like this was one of the, the happiest i was actually with anything working in the build simply because i would had to figure out how to do it myself 
I didn't have anything telling me exactly what to do. I'd had to try and understand the more about how electrics and electronics work in order to be confident in this decision. And yet yeah, it actually, it actually worked. 100 points to Gryffindor. And yeah, I took the test, I actually am a Gryffindor. I'm not, I'm not just a poser. So yeah, if you're looking for a D plus connection in your van and you don't have one, don't worry about it. You can just wire up a switch. Obviously make sure it's fused, you know, follow the instructions as close as you can in the wiring diagram for your charger. But this, this is a very viable alternative. And actually, there is one extra added benefit that I hadn't realized when I did this, but that came in really clutch, actually, when I took my first trip away in the van. For some reason, the battery-to-battery -battery charger wasn't working. Uh, I didn't realize until the second journey I did where I noticed that I hadn't gained any charge at all. And then I tested it and saw that nothing was happening when I turned the switch on. Now, if I didn't have the ability to control whether I was charging from the starter battery, I would have got no charge whatsoever for those periods when I was driving. As it happened, because I had this extra control, I could just leave it turned off and I could use the solar from the roof to still charge the batteries a bit while I was driving, which was really handy because that was enough to charge them up because I wasn't using them that much. It was an outdoorsy kind of trip. If I didn't have that control, I would have just got nothing. So actually, I think having a switch is more functional than having just a straight D plus connection. You actually have the ability to decide what your power system is doing. And I think that's a great thing. But with power comes responsibility. Thanks, Spider-Man. We know that that is the case. So you do have to make sure that you don't forget to turn it off because you can just drain your starter battery and leave yourself stranded somewhere if you're not careful. So yeah, I hope that helped someone out there. Uh, certainly this video would have helped the hell out of me if it existed when I was trying to do this. Maybe there's more information out there now, I don't know, but this is for you, dear viewer. Uh, if you liked the video, if you could give it a like, that would be highly appreciated. Comments are wonderful, subscriptions are wonderful. Uh, I love you all though, you're wonderful, and yeah, catch you in the next one. See you later, taters.